me and Ela both in an entire episode. Was no I just, kidding? It was a whole fucking thing. I got electrocuted, bro. For real? Yes. Yeah. Um, Technically, for those science fans out there watching, electrocuted means killed. Are you? If serious? you didn't die, you weren't electrocuted. You so were shocked. 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 I'm sure there's some other word, but I yeah, electrocuted. Look it up. You have the no, power. No, I believe now. you. I believe you. I'm just. I mean, I've said. I'm not saying that I know. That shocks me. Every word. <laughs> <laughs> Electrifying knowledge. Electrocuted. Can I put my mouth right on the mic? It feels kind of good. <laughs> oh, yeah. I prefer... I Basically, uh, the more in, the better it sounds. How does this... <laughs> a lot that. of famous mouths have been right up next to these. That's true. You get, there's hep, there's <laughs> every, that, that was a really passionate and tender kiss. Have you ever seen me I'm kiss? Je- I'm all of a sudden jealous of your wife. You should be. <laughs> um, yeah, there's all kinds of hepatitis. It's a petri dish. God. It's basically new new forms of STDs being transmitted to your tongue right now. Glad to be a part of history. Cheers to that. Mo Bradbury was using Mo that Bradbury mic. was yeah. <laughs> That's one set of lips you may not. This very mic. Yeah. yeah. You keep this mic here, and you guys use the same mics every time. Yeah. Well, We've we switched around. Actually. Oh, you do. Yeah. What? Well, I've been there before. I don't I've want. Been here. This is my mic. I don't know he what Ela's been up to. Ethan doesn't move. I don't. Fu- I don't let anyone use this mic. Where was Mo? He this was right mic? there. Yeah. We ble- we bleached it though when he was done. Thank you. I bleached it like halfway through the show. I could <laughs> squirt Just ha- he was like protect me from myself. Yeah, I was like, I was like, sorry, buddy. Um, how's the show changed? I mean, last time you were here, we had like a tape it was it was kind of a funky setup right i think you were, yeah i was on you that are, couch on the, I think, yeah. The, yeah which was very comfortable now i'm i do feel kind of tall with this chair being up high but i'm afraid to move it because then the mic will have to move oh, and it'll just oh it. you can the mic I is can very do whatever I want. yeah the mic I, yeah the yeah. mic but what if i don't move it right what if i get too low <laughs> no, don't no, worry. i just want to be efficient you can really just manhandle this thing okay <laughs> well uh, how are you how have you been i mean how how the hell is life since we last <laughs> spoke with you it's great, you know. It's been it's been fantastic. I just got back from the Brain Candy Fall Tour, and that is, you know, it's a it's a slog. You know, every day you got a show. Well, six days right. a week, and then you get one day off. Uh, wow. We were able to perform wow. in Kansas City, my hometown. Mm-hmm. Gave shout outs to some teachers that made a difference in my life oh, who were there yeah. in the audience, <laughs> and got to have my grandmothers come, wow. who, who you know couldn't really make it very far away from Kansas City. So having the show there. Mm. Um, that must have been really cool. It was really cool. Yeah. That is very cool. You do it six. How, so how long do these tours last? Because you says you do it six times a week at once a day, six times a week. So how 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 long is that duration? Well, it could be four weeks, like wow. this um, fall one. But in the spring, we did nine. Holy wow. no Frick. break! How, yeah. how, oh I mean, God. how uh, level with me, Michael? How awful is it? <laughs> it's it's not because here's the thing. Adam Savage has been traveling and touring for years. He right. knows how to make it nice. Oh. So we've got star coaches, right? <laughs> we've got rooms in the back of these buses. We drive overnight. Right. You wake up whenever you want to because you don't have to worry about the show until like 6 p.m. Mm. So you've got a day to just lay in bed, go to the dressing room. I could do a lot of work. I can mm. still make my regular calls. And I can visit the cities. I'm away from home. I'm away from my cats. I'm away from my wife. I'm away from the Vsauce office. And right. that's a drag. Yeah. Right. But uh, meeting people in person is really important. You know, you can watch a YouTube video and and engage with me that way. But when you meet in person or when you turn your whole evening into just coming to a live show, it's a bigger part of your life. I think, yeah. you know, you yeah. remember it longer. <laughs> We've been to your show. It yeah, was we really fun. It. It was a blast. You guys were in Costa Mesa, right? It was in Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it was yeah. a total blast. I remember. It's a total blast. It's a total it's romp. It's really fun. The kids, they love the goddamn uh, balls. That's what I remember. <laughs> the balls. Well, they're free. Yeah, there's free balls. I mean, guys. Free balls. They, you, you really, you're selling tickets to Brain Candy, but what you should really be selling is free balls. Free balls. Come, well, they're not free. You have to buy well, a ticket. You, you, it's yeah. free. It's lots of balls. And then underneath, in parentheses, Brain Candy. Brain Candy. Yeah. Pay for balls. Yeah, pay for the balls. Yeah. Stay for the candy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I found that to be true as well. I mean, when you meet a fan, you re- that personal connection or realizing that these are like real people watching your Oh, man. And the best content. thing is that especially because I'm touring with Adam Savage, a lot of makers come to the shows. People <laughs> who have a craft, people who mm. love uh, to, to make things. And they make us stuff. They wow. make us wire sculptures. A guy made these Muppet 
type puppets of Adam and I that are just oh phenomenal. God. I mean, it's not like I tried. It's like I'm a professional here. Hmm. Normally, this would have probably been thousands of dollars, and I just made it because I wow. love making puppets. And now I have a puppet of myself, which <laughs> so you're is collecting very treasures. Good. You collect treasures. That's that's powerful. Yeah. How, how do you get nervous before the shows? I mean, this is a serious production, and there's a lot of people in the audience. Create they, you know, it's it's a whole thing. They come out tonight. They come out. They watch you. I mean, you've done a lot by now. But walk me through the process of of prepping yourself for that. And now, after doing it for so long, do you, does the nerve still affect you? How how is it? No, the nerves don't affect me now. They did wow. for that mm. first show because. I had never done this. I had no idea what the show was going to be like. We'd run through a few rehearsals with no one in the audience. Right. But luckily, you know, Adam and I are both pretty good at improv mm. Something goes wrong. If something needs to change, we can just do that on the spot. Mm. And you start to get really familiar with it. And then I've got a background of doing live performance ever since, you know, high school, giving informative speeches and, and that kind of stuff in forensics and debate. And so I got the butterflies out. Like, I feel comfortable. If something goes wrong, I can fix it. Mm. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I feel like I would be shitting my, my pants every fucking night. Yeah. <laughs> we've thought, we've toyed with the idea of doing a live tour and I just, I think I would, I would, I would have a breakdown. Well, it's too much stress. You, you might, but not forever. You know, you get forever, over it. Forever. Not forever. No, you would, you would learn. Every night would be the worst night of my life. I feel like, <laughs> you know, I disagree. I, okay. You guys yeah. should do it. You, I like you your would, encouragement. Yeah, you'll be super nervous the first, the second, the third, <laughs> but then you'll start to be like, man, I can't wait for this. I can't so, wait. Mm. Right. So it's a fun thing for you now. You go on stage, you do your thing, you look forward to it. It's really fun. I mean, it's the same show every night, but not really because there is no script. And so right. we're always tweaking things before the show we'll meet and I'll say, you know, I think that joke would land better if we did this, mm -hmm. or I think we should change the order or mm. I think we should ex you should explain that part and then I'll explain this part and then you can pretend you don't understand and then I'll pretend I don't understand and <laughs> it's always changing that's pretty fun and it's new to every audience right that's I've cool. seen the show or I'm in it but <laughs> every night it's a new city and it's new people who are right. like hearing and seeing these things for the first time mm. you had said that you guys are both really good at improv and so when something goes wrong you feel comfortable picking up the pieces what's the most dramatic thing that's gone wrong for you guys on stage I fall a lot on really? stage. Really? You face plant? Not a face plant. Um, there was one night, it was in Canada, I believe it was in London, Ontario, where we didn't have the right party fog juice. Normally mm. oh. we use propylene glycol, uh, I, I believe, and instead we had this oil-based thing, okay. which meant that a layer of oil formed on everything on stage, oh. including oh, the floor. man. <laughs> so... You know, I dance in the show, as you've seen. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't even during dancing. It was just, I was just walking, carrying this bottle of acetone, and boom, slip, hit the ground. <laughs> it was so bad. The, like, I needed to discuss it during the Q&A in the middle of the show because the audience was like, Worried. Are you okay? And also, maybe that was, that had to have been scripted and planned because no way the show would have gone on. That's not even the worst, though. The worst You was, ate shit pretty hard. It sounds yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, and and I, I I'm a really jumpy person, so when I fall, I don't just like kind of you know fall. I go, <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 and then I play it up because I feel like maybe that'll be more entertaining, right. and everyone thinks I'm really hurt. Another time, I I fell, and oh, this this was the same the same show with the oily floor. I right. fall, and I feel while I'm falling, I think you know what I can save this if I start like break dancing right. maybe that's sure. what i meant to do right but there was a stage hand in the way and i roll into him because of course the floor is covered in oil i can't break dance i can't break dance anyway but i also can't even like get friction with the ground so i just right. slide into him right and that, that shirt like a was killer ruined. show that shirt we couldn't get the oil out of it so was that a good was that a favorite shirt of yours it was a really good stage shirt that's and so shame. london ontario you guys were the last ones Damn. do people upload those fails to YouTube, oh. or is it not really? <laughs> I haven't seen any, but I'm I'm sure they. Wait, uh, I see them on social. Michael or uh, Mike, Dan and Ian. Can you guys uh, look up if there's Michael eating shit on stage? <laughs> I want to get yeah, that check up here it out. There, that. I know there's some just like dancing and not falling <laughs> clips out there. Oh my god, I hope that's up there. I mean, that sounds like a hell of a show. If I'm being honest. Yeah, they were very lucky. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very fortunate people. I, okay, well, my next question for you is that. I'm I'm fascinated by uh, people who do a lot of stuff. Because, Fascinating. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Jeez, I can't get a, I can't get a break. People make fun of me because I say "fascinating" a lot. 
I found it really fascinating. Fascinating. And every, fascinating. Time, and every time I say fascinating, Dan hits the soundboard to mock me. Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> fascinating. I'm. I'm. It, I can't even say it. Do I get? Do, do I get passes? Should I get some you fascinating can say passes? It's the F word. <laughs> the F word. But the guests won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Dan. Yeah, Michael's just confused right now. He has no idea what's going on. All right. Let's get. I'm fascinated. Give me a. Give me a break, Dan. Give me a fucking pass on this one. <laughs> By showmen or productive professionals who manage so many things in their lives. Because I, I find myself always like overloaded and I get flustered and lose focus when I have too much shit to do. So you're doing Minefield, Vsauce, Brain Candy, the Curiosity Box. How do you manage all these things at once and keep yourself sane and focused? I don't. I'm going insane. No, I think what it is is it's um, it's about a great team to help you. Mm. You know, um, mm. I'm I'm involved with the curiosity box and and help curate things. But there's a different team that packs them, deals with orders, <laughs> deals with getting samples, um, uh, and. I, I love what I'm doing. That's kind of a cliche answer. But like when I wake up in the morning, I want to continue reading about, uh, you know, rigid rotational dynamics, you know, because I, I just want to. And mm. it happens to also be my job. Mm. But if I couldn't do that, I'd be kind of like annoyed. Mm. So it's I'm, I'm really fortunate that my job happens to be what I do anyway when right. I have free time. Mm. But that also means that I do I ever have free time? Yeah, like I have yeah, to exactly. take a break and say, okay, I'm going to stop well, learning do you, and reading. Do you feel like you have free time? Do you feel like you need free time? Does being so busy all the time, how does that affect your life? It, it doesn't affect my life because my life was already, even before YouTube, the same thing. I just didn't have anyone to listen to what I had discovered. Right. right? I would talk out loud to myself. Um, <laughs> but then with YouTube around, I could just turn who I was into a show. A show. <laughs> Right. And um, to, get, to get bigger than that, to do a live show, to do the curiosity box, to do minefield, you have to have other people help. Mm -hmm. And so how many for, people were with you and supporting you? So, gosh, I mean, there were more than a dozen people on minefield. Wow. Um, and we had a number of actual psychologists helping with pre-production because the first season was classic experiments. It was stuff that I knew because uh, I had an undergraduate degree in it. And I was like, let's just replicate all of these famous experiments. We know the result to expect. Um, and we kind of, you know, we know what we want to do. But for season two, I wanted to go into what are psychologists doing today mm -hmm. and how are they doing it? Mm -hmm. So we had to bring in people who were career psychologists mm -hmm. who could then reach out to different universities and say, what are you doing? Uh, what can we help you do? We've got uh, money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've got resources. We've got, in some cases, cameras. Like mm -hmm. um, an episode that isn't out yet, maybe it will be. When you're watching this, uh, was about the placebo effect and how we're enchanted by neuroscience mm -hmm. that we believe it can do more than maybe it really can, mm -hmm. and having Minefield there as a documentary crew made people believe that the the study was more powerful mm. than it was because of course it was a placebo study, mm. but it must be something if all these people are here <laughs> with cameras. Yeah. If this, you know, if Michael Stevens is here, it must work, mm -hmm. and that was all part of of planting that suggestion in their mind that they're going to get better mm -hmm. that's very cool i'm looking forward to uh how there's another six episodes coming on my field or what's the deal i think there were six out already i think there are three more there's eight total and so oh. far five have come out so mm -hmm. over the next oh, three yeah, weeks five, yeah. the next three will come out <laughs> so i wanted to talk about the season two minefield actually because you definitely it seems kicked it up a notch from season one and I, and I appreciate you sacrificing your own body and mind <laughs> as guinea pig you dabbled in it a little bit season one with the deprivation yeah yeah but um i loved the truth serum and i loved the ayahuasca trip tell me about how you guys came up with that idea and i, I basically i just want to hear like what was the experience like let me start with the ayahuasca because mm -hmm. i feel like on the show I wanted to I wanted to hear more about how was that experience for you, right? Because it was fucking it was a weird <clears throat> trippy thing. Like it's one thing to take a psychedelic and hang out with your friends. It's another thing to hang out in like a jungle while some robed man chants while you yeah. trip balls and be recorded for yes, it. yeah, so. yeah. There's like yeah, that's a weird way to do a psychedelic. <laughs> yes. Hey guys, rather than doing it in like my dorm room, I'm gonna do it in the middle of nowhere. 
where no one has cell connection, where the only way to get back to a city is by taking a boat ride for hours. You're and implying flying. there was a measure of paranoia. There was a lot of fear, and I don't right. think you know we didn't record a lot of that. But I was really nervous as the date approached because I couldn't say no. I mm. could. I made it very clear that like, look. If we're going to do this, we all need to agree that up until the moment I put it to my lips, I can say no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and no one's going to be mad mm-hmm. that we went all the way out there. <laughs> right. Because I, I didn't plan on not, not doing it, but I wanted – You want to reserve the to right. I didn't want to feel forced. Yeah. Um, and so I said, look, when it comes to the, de- the decision process and what we do and how it works, the, that hierarchy goes me, then the shaman, and then – Everyone else. I love that the, the shaman, shaman. supersedes. Yeah. If the shaman thinks that we need to have the lights off, if the shaman thinks right. that we need okay. to stop recording, right. and I can't respond, you listen to the shaman. Yeah. I know he's not on payroll. I know YouTube <laughs> didn't approve him as a director, right. but... Did he get EP credits? I don't know what he got. <laughs> okay. um, but he was a great guy. He was also our boat captain. Oh, he's wow. uh, not, he uh, moonlights. Yeah. Yeah, he moonlights with the ayahuasca. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. But tell me about that experience because, I, first of all, was it your first psychedelic experience? As far as my mother knows, yes, of course it was. Okay, all right. Yeah. She's not watching this. This isn't your mother's show. <laughs> and, and so um, uh, it was oh, – man, I think the, the initial emotion I had before the ceremony was aggravation. Really? Yeah, because I was nervous. But I couldn't, I couldn't do it my way. What was your way? My way would have been to not have all the cameras there, to not have to make a show. <laughs> right. And so this is what's going through my mind. I'm like uh, hanging out in the hut waiting for the, the shaman and, and his assistants to come and get me. But I can't just get picked up and then taken to the, the, the ceremony. We have to like do multiple angles and takes. The experience oh, couldn't yeah. be authentic. Yeah. It was it was totally authentic, but I had a job to do during it. Right. Yeah. That was the hard part, that I couldn't just completely surrender myself to the right. experience. Right. As me, I had to be Michael, the host of Mindfield. Right. I had to listen to direction like, ooh, you know what? We have to do that again because like this light was in the wrong place <laughs> or, oh, we need to get the coverage of oh the shot God. of you entering. And I'm fine doing that, but I had bigger things on my mind. <laughs> and Like so, colors and shapes. Well, n- not even not even then yet because I hadn't even taken it. Yeah. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't even know what kind of colors and shapes are going to be. It, it was frightening. Okay, so then we've got uh, a crew of people, right? We've got something like eight people there, and they've got microphones all around. And usually you do this in the complete darkness. Mm. That makes for a terrible show. Mm. So we had to have lights installed, which made me really self-conscious right. because not only – Am I being watched and Mm -hmm. surrounded by people? You're expected to perform, which I can only imagine would be such an awful feeling while you're tripping balls. Right. Okay. So expected to perform was another concern I had. So I also made it clear that if if I do nothing but lay there catatonically for eight hours, you're all going to be happy. Agreed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to have any responsibility or obligation because you're in a different state of mind. Yeah. And I can perform. That's my career. That's my job. I'm used to that. In this state of mind, right. if I get hangry or grumpy or happy, I can still do those jobs. But I wasn't familiar with what it was like to be in the state of mind that DMT creates. Mm-hmm. So luckily, we had all that figured out, and it wasn't that big of an issue. But I felt really unhappy that I had to have all these eyes on me. Mm-hmm. And, and then as the drug started to take the effect, I felt feelings of guilt. Mm-hmm. Really? Because here I am. I was paid – Mm-hmm. To fly to Peru to take drugs. Mm. And only I got to take them. Mm. No one else on the crew uh, had signed the right insurance paperwork or w- w- would probably be able to do their job properly if they had also <laughs> taken it. So that would have been interesting, though. It could have been interesting. Maybe <laughs> season three. The boom, the boom the guys crew. yanked out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the shaman drank some. You oh, okay. Know? I didn't know him. he would do that. But when he took a dose, I was like... Were you a little concerned when you saw the shaman dip in? Yeah, because I was thinking, wait, I thought you were You're the my watching guide. over me. You're my guide, bro. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you this. When the, the, the effects got stronger and stronger, my feelings of fear and guilt and, and co- the, the self-awareness of all the cameras on me, that every motion I, I did was going to be caught, and if I sat up, They'd have to reposition cameras, and I'd be aware of that. And what if it didn't work? What if they needed to give me some kind of direction and I wasn't in the right state of mind? 
I eventually realized, hey, as annoying as it is to have all these cameras around, if we didn't have the cameras here, there wouldn't be a show. Mm. And I'm doing this for the audience. I'm doing this for Robin, the researcher who was there. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. All of these concerns about, hey, guys, stop walking. That noise is frustrating or right. stop asking for the coverage shots. That's my job. It's for everyone else. Mm -hmm. This is not for me. And starting to think about, I need to just give. Robin, I, come come do the, the, the um, EEG scan. I'm ready for that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, but then I realized by allowing you to do it, I'm giving. It's not about me and what I want. It's mm -hmm. about what everyone's here for. Mm -hmm. So that's a lesson I took that's hmm. interesting. At, from that afterwards. Interesting. Yeah. How, that's uh, interesting because it makes you think about when when something is your hobby and then becomes your job it's kind of like it's not so much about you anymore yeah <laughs> that is kind of profound yeah did exactly it, did you 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 felt that on a level that you hadn't realized before yeah i mean i literally envisioned myself as this like uh waterfall that's just offering <laughs> hmm. its water to the world and i'm like <laughs> I remember sitting there going, at some point, Robin has to come over and give me a series of questions. He's got to put this thing on my head and measure the electro electrical activity there. And I could say no. And I planned on saying no mm. until I realized the way to get rid of all that anxiety was to just say, let's do this. Mm. <laughs> I am a vessel for your research. Mm. Were you concerned from the beginning that you weren't going to be able to, to perform that? Mm. No, I wasn't really concerned because I figured even if it all completely is messed up and we don't get everything right, that in, in and of itself is a story. Whatever happens is good. Whatever happens is good. Well, how did the experience meet, match up to your expectation? Let's, 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 let's just assume that you've taken other psychedelics. Let's just imagine a world where you have. How would that uh, hypothetically compare to your experience? Well, it, it's, it's different for every single person. Hmm. But anxiety was my biggest fear mm. because once you're you're once you've drank the ayahuasca, it's you're you're on the ride. Mm. Like you can't right. take the antidote, right? You know, and the first ceremony was really pleasant and and quite low in in its dosage. The second one, within twenty minutes, I was like, "Oh <laughs> no!" You took twice as much as I recall. You took like a third of a cup the first time, and then. Three fourths of a cup. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it happened so fast. I had lost control. I no <laughs> longer was like observing what was happening. Mm. Things were just happening to me. Right. And my heart started racing. Right. We had a medical doctor there, which normally you don't because it's not dangerous right. physically. Um, but uh, YouTube requested that we have a sure, doctor there. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And so I was, but here's the thing. My heart was going, it was literally beating very fast. I actually, there's a moment where I touch my chest and I'm like, yep, it's really happening. <laughs> but then I thought, how do I let the doctor know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I can't think, no, this is not how I normally feel. Mm -hmm. Is it weird if I just say, hey, um, help? Right. Like, be like, what? How are they going to interpret that? <laughs> yeah. And so I just... I thought maybe I'll just ask for water, you know, <laughs> maybe that like will tether me back down to reality because someone will have to bring me water. And that's a really mundane this is so, thing. Uh, I've been there, like, I feel like I've been in that headspace yeah. of trying to like, you're stuck between like the ethereal world and the physical world and trying to make sense of being on another in another yeah. place. And it's frustrating. I hate that. And feeling. it's frustrating because. I was probably m uh, most consumed not by anxiety, but by the feeling of how do I relay and describe what's happening to me mm. later mm. you know yeah. because that's what always annoyed me about um discussions of psychedelic experiences is that it all felt really vague mm. and hard to empathize Abstract. with and now i i, I mean I, I i know why it's it's like describing colors to someone who's never sure. seen it, it's a completely different state of mind <laughs> right and so i i every psychedelic experience i've had i've hated it I don't know why. Would you say it doesn't sound like you quite hated it, but it seems like it was marked with some negative feelings. Exactly. And my, my yeah, and my experience I always have a lot of. I think my problem is like I'm too anchored. I never really let mm. go, and you're always like resisting the urge to just kind of float off, and you're trying to yeah. like hold on to the earth as you're floating to the sky. I think getting over that resistance is a right. big part of what psychedelics teach you. Right. I didn't 
I, I didn't break th- from that, but I'm aware now of its existence. Mm. I know what it feels like. Um, Robin Carhart Harris from Imperial College London, who came with me, uh, didn't say I had a bad trip. He describes it as a challenging trip. <laughs> yeah. You know? I like that. Um, I'm still glad that I did it, but I'm not like, I got to do it again. And I think that's fine. You know, that's yeah, exactly that's, it's, fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think... I think if you're so that eager to return to that state of mind, you're probably having some trouble dealing with the the actual physical world. If you're so eager to embark out there and, and, and on leave. a daily basis. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I know that um, there's a bonus clip where we spoke to a woman who took uh, psilocybin as part of this what coping is that? with death. Oh, that's death. like mushrooms. mushrooms. Yeah. She took a pill uh, through, through a study at <laughs> NYU. Mm. And she worked with these researchers for months, and they crafted a pill just for her based Mm. on her weight, based on her past. They knew what dosage to give her, and they – I think she felt incredibly safe. She wasn't Mm. in the middle of this brand new place. This was therapy for coping with death? Yeah, she – Her death. uh, Yeah, because she had been diagnosed with cancer. Uh. And to confront your own mortality is obviously frightening, but they – they – we're experimenting with how psychedelics can help you deal with those feelings. Mm. And she was, it, it was a phenomenal experience for her. <laughs> she, she t- tells a story of, of seeing a table with all of her family and friends, but also death is at the table. Mm. And she realized, yeah, death's invited, of course. Mm. And, and ever since th- this happened years ago, ever since she's felt much better. She's, she's, um, you know, felt healthier and she only took that one pill. It's not like she has wow. to take one every month. It's one dose. Huh. Uh, that's that. That's awesome. I love the. I think psychedelics and and drugs like that really have a lot of value to our society. It's just, it's a shame that they get stigmatized. And I think that stigma itself is what contributes to a lot of the negative feelings you have when you take it. I think so too. Yeah, because you start to feel like. Oh my gosh! I'm doing something wrong. Or I'm dangerous. doing something wrong. Yeah. In fact, I I had this thought that cracked me up during that second ceremony where I was like, you know what? When the shaman lights the candle and says that it's over, first of all, it's very comforting because he knows how long these experiences last. When he lights that candle, it's proof to me that the effects are are only oh. going to wear down from now. Mm. I mean, it takes a very long time, but they they when you're going down, you start to regain control. Anyway, Mm. I'm thinking, you know, once he lights the candle and like the crew's done, the first thing I'm going to say is, I can't believe I'm going to have to tell my mom I did this. (laughs) And that made me crack up (laughs) because it just sounded like such a funny thing. I didn't wind up saying it because it just felt like a joke when the experience was really dramatic (laughs) and and, and poignant. But uh, I um, forgot what I was about to say. You were the, you were uh, talking about the stigma, how it makes the oh, experience. Oh, yeah. I think that if, if yeah. I was part of the, you know, Shipibo indigenous tribe where this is a, a medicine prescribed all the time, I would not have felt the same kind of, am I a bad right, person? Right, right, right. Am I, am I, I mean, this is illegal in the country that I live <laughs> right. and I should feel bad that I'm doing this. This yeah. is a behavior that only bad people do. Right. And you have that social baggage right. on you. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, I, I've, I heard about a study that doctors are starting to use MDMA to treat PTSD. So they give you a dose of MDMA, which is ecstasy in the pure form, and they sit you down. And I guess it it it, um, it, it makes you feel more comfortable ta- opening up and you feel more comfortable with the emotions that you're dealing with. And so all these drugs that that I think it's a shame. I really think it's a shame this war on drugs, what it's done. I, I, I genuinely believe that people I, I genuinely believe that people don't abuse drugs unless there's something I can going reach on. on. Like people don't just all of a sudden become addicted to drugs. I think all drugs should be legal and people should decide what they want to do. And if there's education and support right. to help right. people navigate oh, okay. those waters, that we would be a healthier, better society. And the word drugs, what does it mean? Because it so catches bad. so many don't, things, don't everything from heroin right. to DMT to, to caffeine to Tylenol, yeah. right? And so we, 
uh, have done a disservice to both ourselves and to innovation and knowledge by saying, ooh, you're going to study psychedelics? Right. We really only want to fund that if you're going to be studying the bad side of them. Right. And only recently has that started to break apart. And we have this now renaissance of of investigation of psychedelics. Um, Imperial College London has this whole psychedelics research group, and that's who, w what Robin was from, who came with us. Mm. And so far, far we're starting nice to be able to understand more about the mind. Because you cannot the have a complete theory of the mind if you Rooftop. avoid or ignore Rooftop. something Rooftop that it's capable of. has a glitch in it. Right. 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 That's it's crazy, correct. but... I mean, yeah, we've tried some, obviously, by now, from the way we're talking about it. And... It's it's weird to see what your mind is capable of. So um, I wouldn't it's a shame. want to do it on like a daily or weekly or I don't I mean we don't do anything now but we've tried it and yeah, I sure. think the experience of trying something like that is really interesting just to learn about your own yeah. body. People are and, and there's all there's all these scares like you like you take acid once and you lose your mind. I knew a guy who took acid and fucking jumped off a roof or he never came back from the trip. Like these are these are I swear to God these are all just old wives' tales that are just designed to spook you. I don't think that really happens. Yeah, when I was a kid, Maybe I, very, I read... very, very, very rarely. Right. Uh, well, two things. One, when I was a kid, I read the story about the guy who took LSD, thought he was an orange, and locked himself in a closet because he was afraid of being juiced. And, <laughs> you know, you think, oh, my gosh, how terrifying. And, and to be fair, this is a significant decision. This isn't like, hey, you know yes. what you should do is in, invest in gold. Are you bullying? Really? Like, you really should. It's, I don't think anyone should. I don't have any oh, oh, is, oh, is advice busy, or, is busy, is or is I'm it, not going to recommend to anyone what they do. It's their <laughs> choice or maybe the choice a medical professional yeah. should make. Mm -hmm. But the fact that, you know, Gila, you're like, well, as you guys can tell, like maybe we have done some psychedelic. Yeah. That caginess we have to have yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, I is, feel bad it, like even talking about it because no, then people I, are going to say, oh, you guys are promoting drug use. I'm not promoting it. I don't endorse it and I don't recommend it. I just I think, feel like you should be able to talk about yes, it. And, I, right. And like, I think like you said, it's a big decision to make for yourself. And I don't think that it needs to be caged by law or stigma. I think that there should be open dialogue, there should be conversation. And like, go, go to a place like places in Europe where drugs are legal and they'll test it for purity for you. So that you don't take something awful and die. Right. Yeah. Like, how is that not worse? It means that some shady stuff can happen. It means to that, the drugs. that shady, bad people are going to own the market. It's not going to be regulated, and there's not going to be any. You're not going to feel like there's anyone there who can help you or advise you through, through the experience. Something I found fascinating was that when I spoke with Robin, hit him, hit him with the damn fascinating, fascinating. <laughs> I asked Robin, the head of the psychedelics research group at Imperial College London. I'm like, so what's your experience with psychedelics? Right. Yeah. Assuming she do she's done it. He. Yeah. He, sorry. Robin. Robin. Robin, hey. Robin like Batman and Robin. Right. He goes, well, I don't talk about that. I was like, what? It's what? like, dude. And he's like, well, yeah. you know, my, my grandmother might see this. That's such a cop out. And I'm, I'm saying that is, that is, I was going to say fascinating. I'm like, that is. You see, it's fucked up. Yeah. It's, fat. it's like drugs. It's the F word. I've, I've got um, all the stigma around that. What a great drugs example of that yeah. stigma. You that your job is to research psychedelics, and you can't say what a, that you've ever yeah. experienced them. What other scientist does that? Oh, mm -hmm. uh, I study gorillas. Oh, have you ever seen any? Oh, no. Uh, yeah. I would never look at a gorilla. Right. I, I talk to people who have looked at them. Yeah. Or an, imagine an astronomer who's like, yeah, I've, I've been studying the stars and the motions of the planets. I've never looked up. Yeah. Don't judge me. I don't look yeah. up. I it's, talk to others who have, and until we break that barrier, I think we're really missing out on a big part of human mind. It's a, such a beautiful paradox, I think, of, of this guy. I love it. Even on a personal level, he's like, no, 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 I don't talk about that. Yeah. Anyway, listen, let's let's roll to a break. Um, quick thank you to our sponsors, and we will be right back with your boy, Saucy Saucy Vsauce. <laughs> Thank you to Omaha Steaks for sponsoring this episode of the Tree Podcast. Listen, oh, oh, Omaha Steaks is a product that I am fully behind. You know that uh, scene in Pulp Fiction where they open this mystery chest and it's like glowing orange? Well, that's basically what they send you. I receive my package full of fillets, sirloins, pork chops, and gambasas. It arrives in this chest with ice, and you open it. It's like glowing. It's like I'm enlightened when I open this thing. It's unbelievable. Let me tell you about Omaha Steaks. For $49.99, you can get my family gift pack. 
when you go to their website and search H3 in the search bar. That's 75% off. This is high quality meats, my friends, for $49.99. Listen to what you get. Two fillets of the mignons. I knew a guy who once said fillet mignons. He was Australian. He was Australian. Apparently, that's what they call it in Australia. But I didn't know that. I'm sitting at a restaurant with this guy. He goes, I'll have a fillet mignon. I'm like, I'm like you're not. People aren't that dumb. If you're that uncultured, you don't deserve a fillet mignon. 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 I just thought it was funny. Fillet mignon. You get two fillet mignons. You get two top sirloins, two boneless pork chops, four boneless chicken breasts, four kielbasa sausages. Hold on. Let me catch my breath. Four burgers, four potato ag rottens. My is, favorites. Yeah, these are actually incredible. I don't care about the meat. The potato. Hila. The meat is incredible. <laughs> the potatoes are good. I'm not going to take that away from you. It's a huge potato ball that's like – it's like mashed potato in a ball. Yeah. It's like who made – what genius made this? You get four of those. Four caramel apple t- 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 artelets. <laughs> One Oma steak seasoning pack. And plus, in addition, because they love you and because I love you, you get four additional kielbasas. Say it with me because it's a lot of fun to say. Kielbasa sausages absolutely free on top of that. You get all of that for forty nine ninety nine. That's seventy five percent off by going to omahasteaks dot com, and in the search bar type H three, and you'll find my family gift pack. Omaha's got over five hundred gourmet right. gift ideas. They got great steak experiences at home. The most flavorful, tender aged beef, plus seafood, poultry, pork, veal, lamb, veggies, dessert, appetizers, pasta, soup, seasoning. They're basically just listing everything. <laughs> They've got it all. In in, in short. Convenient and quick shopping, guys. It's for those on your list. Ages, it's aged for 21 days to unlock the full flavors of the cuts. Hand trimmed, vacuum sealed, my friends. Very cool. You are not going to want to miss this H3 family pack. So head on over to omahasteaks.com, enter my code H3 in the search bar, and get 20, 75% savings. Unheard of. You're going to love this. I guarantee it. Thank you, Omaha. Appreciate you and your steaks. Thank you to Lyft. For sponsoring this episode of the H3 Podcast, Lyft knows that their drivers it, is what keeps them moving, literally. So they do everything they can to make sure their drivers are happy on every trip. It's a simple formula. Dri- happy drivers mean happy passengers. Maybe that's why 9 out of 10 Lyft drivers get a perfect five-star rating. Are they? I don't know that they can take credit for that. I, I think the drivers are just nice, but I guess it's a nice <laughs> environment, right? I mean, I don't know yeah. that you can take credit for I mean, you know, pe- people helping people, right? You're going to meet interesting people. You're going to have chat. If you want to be a writer, you want to be an artist, a creative, get, hop in a lift and drive some around. You're going to learn a lot of things. People can give you five stars. You can be happy about yourself. Give you confidence. Okay? But, you know, forget all that because you can earn <laughs> hundreds of dollars a week plus tips. <laughs> want to earn more money? Drive more. It's never been easier to give yourself a raise. Lyft was the first rideshare platform with tipping built right in, okay? And uh, so because getting tips shouldn't depend on your passenger having a crumpled bill in his pocket. And let me just say to their credit, I completely agree. I never have cash on me. I prefer riding Lyft because I can tip through the app and I I don't carry cash. Hello, I only carry Bitcoin. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Does Lyft accept Bitcoin? I don't understand cryptocurrency. You can't use it. No, okay, I'm just, I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> you can't use it. How is it a currency? It's like the monopoly money. You keep 100% of the tips and they add up quick as heck, my friends. Drivers have been paid over $200 million since this feature was first introduced. Express pay lets you get paid almost instantly, except waiting for weeks and hope maybe not even getting paid at all by these scumbag employers out there. You don't got to deal with that when you drive for Lyft. Lyft has taken the guesswork out of pickups. The new AMP device uses color coding to help passengers find their drivers, guys. So listen up. Join the ride-sharing company that believes in treating its people better. Go to lyft.com slash H3 today, and you will get a $500 new driver bonus. That's 500 clams for a new driver bonus. That's Lyft. L-Y-F-T dot com slash H3 lift dot com slash H3 limited time only and terms do apply. So thank you to Lyft for sponsoring us. If you're in the market for if you try to pick up some money, consider uh, supporting us with Lyft. And if you want some dang meats, please consider supporting us with Omaha Sticks. Thanks so much for watching. Let's get back into the sauce.
And we're back. HC Podcast with Vsauce. What are you, did you ever consider puking out the ayahuasca after you drank it? Were you like, can I do that? Uh, <laughs> you don't have time. As soon as it's entered your body, you can try to vomit it up, but some DMT's already entered your bloodstream. But um, you would reduce the effect if you just, like, gagged. Maybe, yeah. Uh, I mean, you would, probably, it would have to be the case, probably right? Probably a rough start. Um, <laughs> vomiting and, and diarrhea are, a, or not not diarrhea, but like lots of pooping, it could be solid, I'm assuming, is a big part of the ayahuasca experience. And, oh. And it, it's um, How nice. something they're prepared for. I had a puke bucket there. There are bathrooms there that Was you can that be taken to. Was that captured on a film? Never happened. Never happened. <laughs> I never even felt like I had an upset huh. stomach. Interesting. And ah, I've heard of shaman who encourage that. It's part of the process of kind of you know, your purifying yourself. Um, and there could be a legitimate medical uh, reason that it's good in mm. that you can flush out harmful bacteria if you really are having some intestinal problems. But never happened to me. Some, some shaman will make you puke by either <laughs> disorienting you with their song or giving you a tobacco drink. That could be pretty dangerous. I mean, we did this as safely as possible. Right. Again, we had a medical doctor there. Right. YouTube had, don't play. Yeah, YouTube was. <laughs> yeah, and so I think that's a huge lesson to learn. Like this was not a recreational, let's yeah. have fun and be yeah. weird kind of moment. This was a let's work with a university, let's yeah. work with a hospital, and let's let's learn. What was the scientific purpose of the? Exp I know you did. You put the electroid things on yeah. on your head to measure your brain waves. Was that the purpose, or was it just? To go through this experience as a science scientist of of sorts, and and to try to describe it, it was both because I wanted to see if I could help it talk about that state of mind as someone who's a professional science communicator, but at the same time, no study had been done that was that environmentally valid, like mm -hmm. literally done in the Amazon with those songs in those languages right. in that location it, it, they're usually done in these very clinical um hospital environments where you're in a white room and you, you don't know you're in a big city right so we were able to look at that and help um the researchers learn what variables to worry about what kind of technology works obviously it's not an experiment it's not like oh we had a whole sample size in a control group it's just one person you've got an n of one just so we're not experience. pretending yeah we're not pretending that this is some experiment it was more of a, uh, a a kind of pilot study to see what is it like to go to these retreats and try to collect data can we find anything interesting? Um, is this particular EEG helmet going to give us enough data, or is it too noisy? And that so we, we learned a lot in that case. I felt a little bit confused by that experience because you guys were saying in the show you did it the first time you took a small dose, and the second time you took a larger dose, and you guys were saying I almost had an ego death. I know. I was almost there. Yeah. I didn't quite get there. Yep. And then I was like, oh, great. Well, I can't wait for the third one when he, takes when he gets there. And, I know. Then, and then I was like, wait, there's only three minutes left. I know. That's, what happened? That's what happens when you are doing it for real and you you, you, you don't know what the result's going to be. You know, we have a lot of... Did you consider of... doing it again, though? Because you could have taken more. I, You know, yeah, I could have decided because... A few hours in that second ceremony, I realized, oh, you know what? I can't get back to that ceiling that I was afraid of and turned away from. Mm. I could have gotten up and asked for more. This mm. can happen during a ceremony, but I didn't. Mm. And th there are other things that you'll see in future episodes where, like, I tried to get um, TMS on my head to disrupt and arrest my speech. Mm. We could not find Broca's air. Oh, no. They couldn't make it happen. Mm. That's just what happens, you know? Um, if we'd spent, you know, was, a whole was week the trying. dose was the large dose you took, what is normally enough to have someone have like a full ego loss? I think it's different person to person. Okay, right, based totally. on your weight and depends on your weight, depends on your mindset, depends on the setting. Um, you know, a full cup is pretty strong, but the you know the point of ayahuasca is not to experience ego death it's mm. it's different person to person like for a lot of people a small dose it's just to kind of like um i don't know whatever effect you think it's you know you want from it right mm -hmm. um it's not about you're doing well if you're taking more not at all mm. not at all you continued down the rabbit hole of strange drugs later in the season and mm -hmm. you experimented with the truth serum to see if an interrogator who gives you this truth serum can actually get information out of you. I 
was actually surprised by how effective, in my opinion, it was. Like, you you just... She, the interrogation technique she used was very clever, right? Like, it's not what you expect. Like, yeah. in the movies, you have, like, a Bond villain who's, like... And you just get brainwashed and say everything. But the way she approached it was very clever. Yeah, it was clever and it was really fun. Like, yeah. I just felt like... I am the most funny person ever right now, <laughs> so and I'm just going to give you material. Interesting. That's yeah. funny. Um, and she, she, yeah, didn't play bad cop. And I, I think at one point I asked her to. You know, I was like, hey, could you stop being so nice? Right. Um, I don't remember that. I, I don't remember much after, I think, when she asked me who the president was. They kept giving you more. I was, they're like, give him a little bit. You're like, I'm pretty fucked up. They're like, give him some more. I was like, damn. They, they pumped <laughs> yeah. you full of There's that shit. There's a funny moment where the guy Just was passed like, out. you know, this is this is more than I – I'm not going to give any more. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, I could take more. <laughs> and But I don't remember it. That was, that was the scary part. It was that they could have told me I had said anything, mm. and I wouldn't know if they were wrong or not. Right. Well, that's pretty um, scary. And the thing about midazolam, which is the truth serum that – I was administered is that there's an antidote for it that works quite quickly. Really? And so all of a sudden I just come to and I'm no like, no way. I've yeah. always wondered if that was possible. It was weird. It was like, just I, to go from completely fucked to sober. I find that. Yeah. I didn't know how much time had passed. I just immediately was like, Hey, wow. <laughs> what happened? And, right. and I was forming memories again, all of a sudden. Huh? Yeah. Um, but the, tell me the way that she got in the game was that, you had information you're trying to conceal from her. She was trying to get it. Like, for example, that you had a sister, I guess, was one of them. Yeah, and, and my so, sister's name. Your sister's name. So her approach wasn't to be like, tell me your sister's name, like you would see in a movie. It's what, like, she would wait till you're super smashed and be like, uh, so your sister Jessica is a dentist for a living? And then mm -hmm. you would be like, yeah, that's what you, you exactly. know, you, like, it's really clever. It's really tricky. You yeah. had to really be sharp, and you had to not just be living in the moment. To mm -hmm. keep the information. They basically mm -hmm. just dull your brain to the point of you're just agreeable. Well, yeah. All your inhibitions are gone. Yeah. You're not holding anything back because you're, you're just not aware of what you should be holding back. And right, you're just right, living right. in that exact moment where there's nothing else to be concerned about. Right. It's like the puppy dog mode. I keep thinking <laughs> yeah. about a little puppy. He's yeah. on truth serum all the time. <laughs> um, what, do you, what do you think after doing that? Do you think that... That serum is is it a, an effective way to get information from someone? I think that it is an effective way to get information. I don't think it's an ethical way. Right. And I should, with the caveat that I don't, I'm not sure it's effective because. I'm funny. A funny human being. A funny song. A funny picture, a funny day, a funny movie. It's that they're just like us. They eat, they talk, they make friends, uh, they sleep, walk, read, swim. A funny dog, a funny fact, knock knock, who's there? A funny joke, a funny show, a funny feeling, a funny tragedy. A funny emotion. A funny twist. A funny murder. A funny can. You're funny. I defaulted. Hey dude, how are you? 